So it's that time of year when we love to give gifts. And today I want to share with you 12 great gifts for the gardener in your life and a bonus gift. And perhaps you might along the way discover something that you want for yourself because I know that I have every one of these things and they're all useful and I can't imagine gardening without them. Now these are not in any particular order in the sense of which ones I like the most because they all serve a great purpose and I'm happy with all of them. So first up is a cart. This has come in so handy for me. I pull it all around my garden, actually all around my property. I carry everything in it from big bare root fruit trees to big 15 gallon buckets of soil to well bags of chicken feed, just anything you can imagine. This cart has really saved me a lot of physical effort and perhaps injury. And I really don't think I could do a lot of the stuff I do without it on hand. I have had it for over seven years and it has not had any issues whatsoever. So I highly recommend it. Next up is a fun one, bird baths. Now you could spend a lot of money on bird baths. You can go to some nurseries like I have and see just gorgeous stoneware bird baths, fountains of all kinds but you can also go simple. And I have found that the simple bird baths last quite a long time. In fact, none of mine have worn out yet. And they, guess what, do the job. The birds come right into them the same as they do to the expensive stone ones. So I have three different plastic bird baths and I don't like plastic, but these don't look like plastic. They actually look like stoneware. And uh, like I said, the birds love them just as much as they would love a stoneware one. Putting bird baths out in my garden has really changed things. It's definitely brought in more birds. I've put simple solar fountains in a couple of them, and the birds love that. But even the ones with still water attract plenty of birds to come and play. And it's kind of a new hobby of mine now, sitting around bird watching and seeing how many species come into the garden. And when you bring in the birds, not only do they provide you with hours of enjoyable entertainment, you know, appreciating their beauty and their lovely bird song, but also they do the important job of tackling insects and pests in your garden. So I really can't recommend bird bats highly enough either. I think gardeners of all kinds would definitely appreciate one of these in their garden. Now the next thing on my list is a plant stand. And I just got two of these and I'm very excited to start using them. I'm going to be putting them on my back patio where up till now I've had all my container plants, my flowers that I've grown from seed and cuttings I've taken trying to propagate plants from around the property. I've had them all on the ground in containers, but now with these two plant stands, I can elevate meaning I can get a lot more plants in there because it's just a much more efficient use of space. And they're gorgeous. They're really gonna make it a relaxing area for me to sit and enjoy looking at everything. They won't all be on the ground anymore. They'll be at all different levels. And I think that's just gonna look really cool. And I'm not really sure why I didn't think of it before because I love the way they look. And I will definitely share them with you in future videos once I've got everything all arranged. Well, that's three down. Number four is something I've been using since I started gardening here, which is seven or eight years ago now. Uh, and that is a common, inexpensive, but so necessary tool for me. And that is tool. Tool is a great tool for me anyway. It keeps the birds off my seedlings. It keeps interested little rodents away from my plants. I just love it so much and really so cheap to get and so easy to use and reuse. Some of my tool is several years old and still holds up great to weather and to my manipulation of it. And uh, I just keep using it and using it in many different ways around my plants, at the base of plants. It's just a very, very useful item. And I, I just can't imagine gardening without it. So definitely high on the list. And you can get it in so many colors too. I like to get it in gold because it sort of just disappears once you have it draped around your plants. But some people like dark green and some people like to be really, you know, artsy and get like hot pink or whatever. It just comes in a huge variety of colors and you can get 40 yards, a bolt for so little money. Number five on my list has to be these rain boots or mud boots, whatever you want to call them. I can't tell you how long I resisted getting these. 
I knew about them. My friends told me how much they loved theirs. And I just kept thinking, well, it hardly ever rains here. We don't really get a lot of mud. I don't know if I can, you know, justify the expense. I'd hardly ever wear them. But one year I realized we might not get a lot of rain, but I do fill my pools for the ducks every day. And those ducks really like to create and play in a lot of mud. And you know, it would be a lot easier if I could just slip on boots that I didn't have to worry about getting dirty. And oh, these were so worth it. They were worth every single penny and they're so sturdy. They'll probably last me the rest of my life. I got a little bit bigger size than I normally get. So they'd be really easy to slip on and off, no hands even. And that has worked out great. I can wear several layers of socks with them if I want to. But even when I just slip into them barefoot, which I have done, they don't come off. No, nope, they're very secure, super comfortable, and they do the job. They have plenty of room at the top for my jeans to tuck into. Uh, they just saved me so much laundry and just so much inconvenience with washing off my other shoes. And I can't believe I waited so long to get them. So Yes, mud boots, get them. And oh, they come in such a variety of designs and colors. I really like the sunflowers on black. Now, number six is a new acquisition for me. I only got these a few months ago. I even did a video on them because I was absolutely so impressed with them. They really, really work. And that is one compress gloves. When my arthritis is acting up, which it does many days, I put these on and the difference is amazing. Sometimes I wear them in the night and in the morning and when I get up, instead of being swollen and achy, my hands feel like reinvigorated. I am a big believer in these now. I never ever would have thought I would be able to wear gloves while out gardening or working on my laptop, which I do a lot of typing because I'm a writer. And guess what? I adapted to these right away. It took no time at all. They're so comfortable and they just make my hands feel so good. So I highly recommend One Compress Gloves. And I've included a link below as well as a coupon code that gives you 10% off. And they have other products too. In fact, I'm ordering some for myself uh, this coming week, which includes something for my posture and for other areas of my body that will help with, well, joint aches and pains, neuropathy, that kind of thing. But the gloves, those one compress gloves, I just recommend them so highly. All right, number seven on the list is heat mats. Now, I'm not gonna say grow lights because everybody's situation when they're starting seeds indoors is different. You know, you might have a rack with lots and lots of shelves, or you might, as I do, have a makeshift situation with rows of end tables and TV trays and such, and maybe they're all different heights. And so you have to adapt the grow lights you're using to the heights and sizes of your various stands. So. Grow lights are not on my list, but heat mats, heat mats are. I don't know if you can have too many of those. I like to have different sizes. So I have some long thin ones and some short square ones. And this just allows me to, with very little effort, get plants going in the middle of winter. So they're already healthy and a good size, ready to go out in the garden as soon as it warms up enough. Number eight great gift for gardeners was a new product for me a few years ago. In fact, uh, I think I never even heard of these until about four years ago, but boy, have they been a great boost to my garden. They really work well if you are either in a hot, dry area like me, or if you do a lot of container gardening. And that product is Oyas. Now, Oyas come in all sorts of sizes. You can make them yourself with some, um, you know, piece together type products, but it's nice to have a few that come ready made. And I like these because they're narrow and long and they do really well in containers. Out in my garden beds, I like a bigger ones uh, that take up more space and I tend to create some of my own for those. But for containers, this kind works super well and really lessens the need for watering so that uh, you can actually get away for a couple of days and not worry about what's gonna happen to your container plants. 
Number nine gift is a Hori Hori. Now this knife is so practical. It's got so many uses. I love it out in the garden. I use it so much in the spring. I mean, it has that really sharp cutting edge, but it's a great digging tool. You can hack with it, you know, when you need to hack. Sometimes you need to hack. And it's not gonna wear out on you. I've had mine for many years and it's going strong. Speaking of going strong, number 10 on my list is something, it's a group of things really, that I've been using here on my property, in my orchards, and in my garden uh, for basically the whole time I've been here for 10 years, and that is Ryobi tools. They're rechargeable, the batteries are interchangeable. I absolutely love Ryobi, I stand by them fully. I've had no problems with them whatsoever. I just love them. I've got a Ryobi lawnmower. I have a Ryobi circular saw, a Ryobi sawzall, Ryobi drills, Ryobi weed eaters. I mean, pretty much I have all the Ryobi stuff. If I don't have it, I probably will get it soon. And the batteries, I just love the way, you know, you can change them from one to the other. I use these tools constantly. I used them to build my new chicken coop this past spring. My son and I were up on the roof the other day and we used them to secure some uh, plastic roofing to um, basically install a skylight in my carport. So I just use them all the time. I use them in the house as well, but out here in the garden when I'm, you know, putting in posts for um, a trellis or I just installed three big posts to secure um, my espalier apple tree and my kiwi vines and you know I'm just always using them always 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 so I mean I never thought of myself as a DIY person and I never thought I'd be able to handle tools myself with my arthritis and my various health problems like my degenerative disc disease and stuff like that but the Ryobi tools are all lightweight and um they just, they're fabulous. You know, one little benefit to battery operated lawnmowers that I found is if you're like me, you tend to want to just keep working and working until you get a job done. But um, mowing the front part of my property uh, because I have acres, um, it's not really a good idea for me to try to do that all at once. And yet, you know, that's my inner drive. Just get it done. And I lose track of time and I just focus on finishing the task. But because eventually the battery does run out, uh, that is like my little timer that makes me stop. So I only take one battery down there to the bottom of my property with me. And that way I have to actually, you know, choose, okay, do you want to go get another battery and keep going? Or are you going to be smart and call it quits for today and, and tackle this project, you know, little by little, day by day. So that has actually been a real help for me. <laughs> so if there's anybody else out there like me who likes to just keep going at a task, even, you know, after your body has told you to stop, maybe it's getting dark and freezing and you, yet you just keep going, this might actually help you. I mean, that's not gonna work on most of the tools because you don't use them for hours at a time, but for mowing, it, it might come in handy for you, like it has for me, definitely. <laughs> now, the last two things on my list are some of my favorites. One of them is a must-have if you are either trying to grow a fruit orchard, which I highly encourage you to do, no matter how small it is, even if you just start with two or three trees, or if you like to experiment with propagating things. So number 11 on the list is a good pruner. Now these are called different things by different countries, but y'all know what I mean. And I'll stick a picture up here of my favorite brand, the one I use all the time. I have used a couple of others and really if you get a good quality one, you can't go wrong as long as you take care of it. You don't want to leave it out in the rain and let it get rusty, but you don't want to be trying to prune your fruit trees with something that's not right for the job because you could actually damage your fruit tree and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to link below a couple of different brands that I know from firsthand experience work really well. Fruit trees are an investment. They cost a lot of money up front, you know, compared to seeds or, or you know, a little starter six pack of plants. But of course, after a couple of years, wow, that investment is repaid over and over, hundreds fold, thousands fold. But because they are an investment, you don't want to take any chances with them, so you want to get a really good quality product for pruning. The other thing about getting good quality pruners is it's going to save your hands. Whether you have arthritis or carpal tunnel or just don't have any issue at all with your hands, still pruning and propagating lots of plants can lead to hand pain. So you want to get 
uh, pruners that have a really comfortable grip and that are well made so they do the work rather than your hand doing the work. So I highly recommend the ones I'm gonna link below and that I'm showing pictures of here. Now that leads me to number 12 on the list of great gifts for the gardener and that is books. And I don't mean just any books, I mean books that will encourage your gardener friend or maybe yourself in the type of gardening that they love or that they'd like to get into. So if you have a friend who really wants to start growing roses, well then, get her some good books on roses. And if you have a gardener in your life who say wants to start a fruit orchard, well, there's definitely some books out there for them. I have several of them. And boy, books are great. I mean, I love YouTube. I watch all kinds of YouTube channels and I learn so much from them. I really do. And I just enjoy watching some of them. I love seeing different personalities and gardeners from all around the world different climates, different types of plants that grow. It is just fascinating. And I always learn something or just am motivated and encouraged to keep going with my own form of gardening. But there is something about books that is also fabulous. You know, it's that written and often visual information right in front of you, in print, hard copy that you can see and refer to and flip pages and really soak it in and you know, you have it for reference whenever you need to pull it off the shelf or perhaps, you know, pull it up on your phone if it's a Kindle book. I first learned how to propagate from a great book on propagation. Yes, later I also watch some YouTube videos, but I can go back to that book on propagating over and over and look at the step-by-step -step photos and read the experience description of the author uh, on all her many years of varied experiments. So books are just a fabulous way to go when it comes to pretty much any hobby, but definitely gardening. You know, one of the books I'm gonna be getting this year, I hope is on how to build different kinds of greenhouses because I'm gonna really be researching that because I definitely wanna do that sometime in the next year or two. Now, I do have a bonus for you, and that is especially handy if you've kind of put off getting a gift to the last minute, or if you just don't wanna go wrong and you want your gardener friend to get exactly what they want. And that is, it's not a cop out. Nope, it's a good thing. That's a gift card to a plant nursery. I think this is a wonderful gift. Whenever I have been gifted a gift card to a plant nursery, I have absolutely loved it. I can take that card and go buy whatever tree I want, or I can order online. I mean, there are some great catalogs, uh, Burnt Ridge Nursery and One Green World. So many great plants you can get. And when you give them a gift card, you're leaving the choice up to them. So you know they're gonna be happy with it. And you know, it's um, not going to arrive late because you can just do an e-gift certificate even at the last second and have a wonderful gift for that gardener in your life. Or maybe, you know, it could be a hint you give to someone that, you know, you might would like it as a gift this Christmas season or for your birthday or whenever, you know, gifts are being exchanged. Speaking of gift giving seasons, it's a very busy time of year around here and I'm sure you're all busy where you are if you're celebrating this holiday season at all. And yes, that is why a video did not get done last week. I was busy crocheting. That's what I've been doing. Oh, and dehydrating, because both of those things figure heavily into my gift giving this year, which by the way, I'm doing two more gift videos for the channel. One is going to be all about kitchen gifts for the gardener, the food preserver, the tea drinker in your life. And the other one is going to be all about inexpensive, even free, uh, homemade or homegrown or thrifted gifts that you can give this season, many of them last minute. So those are going to be coming up this week. I'm going to be filming those tomorrow and get them up as soon as I can, just so you can have, you know, options as you head into these uh, last two weeks of December and into January. I always think that January is a great time to give gifts. I like to do that for people because, you know, it's the start of a new year and new hobbies and, you know, just, well, the start of the growing season. 
It is, it is the start, I know. Even if you're under snow though, you're already planning and thinking and ordering and wishing for the sun to come back. <laughs> so speaking of wishing, I wish you all a very happy December, very happy holiday season if you're celebrating and a very happy season, whatever that might be, wherever you are. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you again very soon.